Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Well, today's been a big day in crypto news, especially for the cryptos that we've been covering on the channel for many months now. Solana is one that has come up a lot. There's a lot of problems at the moment. FTT, huge FUD attacks going on on Twitter. We'll cover those as well. And of course, the big Bitcoin Golden Cross. What does that mean? And did you get in to buy my NFT of the Golden Cross on Twitter? If not, don't worry. I'm sure you could copy and paste it at a later point. Either way, we're looking at Solana, FTT. Are your funds safe? Are the markets going nuts? Are you going to get dumped on? Don't worry. We have funds are safe right here from the big man himself, CZ. Okay, so enough of my corny t-shirts. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, do all that stuff to help out the YouTube algorithm. Let's click on and look at the Bitcoin Golden Cross first. So, there it is. There's a Golden Cross. The yellow line crossed over the blue line. Great. Okay, so what does that mean? It is a moving average. So, it basically just tells us, is the market in a confirmed uptrend or downtrend? And is it even reliable? So, how do you identify a Golden Cross on the chart? Crossover of the 100-day moving average by the 50-day moving average or the crossover of a 200-day average by the 50-day average. So, traders have their own definitions of how they are going to use these signals, but that's essentially what you're seeing. It comes up a lot, especially when that timing is getting very close to have this indicator show up and flash all of the bullishness across the entire market space, or at least that's what we are led to believe. The short-term average trends up faster than the long-term average until they cross. So, the short-term, there it is. There's the yellow. The long-term is the blue. The yellow is trending up. And now they cross. What does that mean? Well, does a golden, what does it indicate? A golden cross suggests a long-term bull market going forward. It is the opposite of a death cross, which is a bearish indicator when a long-term moving average crosses under the short-term moving average. Now, the important part, are golden crosses reliable indicators? As a lagging indicator, a golden cross is identified only after the market has risen, which makes it seem reliable. However, as a result of the lag, it is also difficult to know when the signal is a false one until after the fact. Traders often use a golden cross as confirmation of a trend or signal in combination with other indicators. So, with that in mind, it can help. It can be a confirmation, but it is not a standalone indicator. And any long-term investor or trader will hopefully tell you that. This is not something that's just used as a one-off. Now, I brought it up at the beginning of the video because this is something that is coming across the news a lot today, especially as you can see, the indicator has crossed, but it's nothing more than that. It may indicate that the market is now in a confirmed bullish uptrend and will be going to 100K from this point, or it could be up, down, or sideways, as we have seen through 2019 and 2020, just as one example. There is the Golden Cross in February 2020, and the yellow indicator moves underneath, so we get the death cross, and then we get the golden cross yet again in May of 2020, and we haven't seen the death cross come back in until we were basically at our, basically the exact low point. So that was in June, getting that death cross. Of course, we're coming back across, and the cycle continues. So you probably want to see this with many other indicators to identify if the market is actually going up from this point. That's the way I look at it. The way I'm reading the chart right now is we are just poking our head above the 50% level. So that's part of the stronger side of the market. So this is the major 50% and we want to get multiple closes within that 50% zone. So that's not to discredit any of these indicators. They all have to be used in conjunction with other indicators and then it just forms your basis over time uh, as you become more experienced with how to use them. So some people can use them, some people can't, and they hate them for that. It's really up to the user. It's the tools. Use which tools work for you. Um, so in terms of Bitcoin, good support. Hopefully, if we can hold above this 46.7, 46.8, I like a round number of 47,000. That is going to give me much more hope that we will form a base above here and move up. But we have been up for about 49 days. So that is seven weeks. You can see from this low that we had in July 
up to the top gives us seven weeks. And so to have a recovery of only a, a week or so, so this is the first day here, we're currently into our eighth day. I feel, I know it's not an exact science, but it definitely does not feel like it's time yet after seven weeks up, maybe a little more time is required. Doesn't mean we have to crash to new lows of 28,000. It might just mean some more time in this area. And of course, my zones are uh, above that 37K at the worst case scenario, but somewhere around that 40 to 45-ish K to cool off, chill out, buy the dip, and then wait for that next stage. I think it's going to be drawn out a little longer than people can wait. And they'll lose patience. And at that time, that's the best time to be in these markets. So let's look at the FUD and all of the fear and the stuff that's been going wrong with Solana and FTT. But first up, if you guys aren't already, check out the Patreon membership down below. 42 out of the 100 left. So if you are interested, check it out. Link down below. This is our uh, exclusive community. We've got a Q&A coming up at the end of the month. So if you want to join on board for that, check it out down below. 42 left. It's going at about 5 to 10 places per day. So probably in a week's time, there won't be any left in this zone right here. All right, on to the FTT and Solana news. Warning, I put this out this morning quite early. It was at 4.30 on my way to the gym. FTT holders, nothing has been confirmed. So there is there was a bit of a an attack on FTT just from a FUD sense, not from their technical sense, not attack in the technology. But you've got a few posts here. Enormous amounts of Bitcoin is on the run whipping around trying to shake off dirty addresses puts a bit of a scare in there we're tracking it guarantee you this is an enormous hack we'll post an update in the morning now was it an enormous hack we haven't seen anything yet this is the posts here from the original tweet two billion moving block to block majority of blocks had no withdrawals or, or one. 360 million on FTX hot wallets. Instead, the 2 billion being whipped around, red flags for peeling, which is normal when funds are stolen, not user withdrawals. Now, FBF has also responded, but we've also got this comment here from Larry. Rumors of FTX being hacked, which is spreading like wildfire, are fake. Don't pay attention to it. Now, who is this person? Where do they come from? The block. Okay, so that's a reputable cryptocurrency uh, new source and you can see here that they are also followed by none other than Vitalik Buterin himself. That guy there was the founder or the director, sorry, of research and SBF's reply. For those who don't know, Bitcoin withdrawal processing involves combining together UTXOs from deposit addresses, etc. A few days ago, we were consolidating some UTXOs into an address to make processing quicker. Note, this also rotates when we send out BTC withdrawals. Expect it to keep moving around. Sam is saying that this is probably going to keep happening until they fix up the addresses, if they in fact do. We generate a new change address with each withdrawal. So it doesn't seem like it's a problem. That's what they knew already. But there is a bit of FUD going on. So just keep that in mind. So what does that mean for the price of FTT? Well, first, I'm going to look at FTX against Bitcoin. So FTT, BTC. The price is coming back into the previous zone. So this was the zone before it took off to that recent high. Now, I've had multiple days down, so multiple red days. I don't think this is going to turn around anytime soon, but I like it as another opportunity to start implementing a DCA plan at this point. But that doesn't mean that the price is going to exactly hold here and then boost back up to new all-time highs. Uh, I'll just look at this zone as previous resistance. So we can see from May, that was a previous major, major all-time high top. And then we broke through on strong volume, retested it and took off again. But now we're coming back into this zone by the looks of it to maybe retest it to see if we can regain some strength and hold it as support. I would be concerned if this level began to break down. That is the lows and the highs. So that's around 0 0.0012 of a Bitcoin and then started to you know churn its way around in this zone so i'd be concerned about that not overly too worried long term but again if we started to break major lows on the way down then sure that could be that could spell the end to the major trend up looking at ftt on the usd pair similar sort of deal when it comes to the analysis here the tops are in play so that's around 59 to about 67 ish dollars so that's looking at this previous top, the all-time high, 
the support zone. So that's where I'm getting all of these areas from. And so if that churned around in these high levels between that 58, 67-ish, no problems. If it's found a base here at 67 and began to form another base, that's also a good sign. But if we broke down and then started to make our way back into the uh, the 40s and the low 50s, that might be a bit concerning for the longevity of this bull move on FTT, only because you start to break down these support zones. That's the main reason here. So FTT for me is looking okay unless support zones are broken down. So far, it's looking okay, especially after a FUD attack. Now on to Solana. And the problem with Solana is that the network became overloaded. So tweet here from Solana status, Solana mainnet beta encountered a large increase in transaction load, which peaked at 400,000 transactions per second. Huge. These transactions flooded the transaction processing queue and lack of prior prioritization of network critical messaging caused the network to start forking. So it started to go crazy and they have had to reset it looking at some of these other posts. And we haven't had any updates since that point in time. The validator community elected to coordinate a restart of the network. The community is preparing a, re a new release and instructions will be posted in Discord. So I guess if you want to know more about it, check this out, Solana status, check out the Discord, learn about it over there or continue to follow these posts as I'll do right now on Twitter so that you can see the updates from the community. Has that continued to affect the Solana price? So has this affected the Solana price? Well, it looks like it has. Obviously, the last 24 hours, it's had a pretty big drop. Now, from the top 216 to the low of 142, had about a 34% drop. Now, that's multiple red days in a row. And I remember the last time I saw that, we, it happens quite often, actually, when you do see multiple days like this, it's not going to turn around that quick. So I'm not in any rush to be buying a ton of these dips. I am looking for dips in Solana, don't get me wrong. But I've seen that on Bitcoin. We talked about it on the channel back in April when Bitcoin went on multiple red days down. Uh, that really turned the trend because now we have swung into more of a bearish sentiment with more days down than up. That's just a simple trading rule as well. So we have started to base out for now at around that 140-ish level. I would be concerned if we broke any further than around that 90-ish, 90 $95 level because I've seen that before on Solana. It held up during that last bull run and especially the major correction came back and sat on the 38%, so a good solid 61%, 61% correction and we had multiple bounces on that. So the 50% was good, the 61% was a strong level and I'm looking for that to repeat in order to maintain the integrity of this up move. So that brings us out at around $93, $96 and then the 50% level is at about 119 and the double there is about 115. So that's why I like these levels. There's a bit of price cluster movement going on there. So even if this falls a little further, I like the DCAs around the 140, the 120 and around that 100. That looks like good areas for this point in time. I don't think it's going to recover extremely fast. If it does, fantastic. We take off with the gains. But if it takes some time, then that's what happens because the market has shot up huge from these lows in a very short amount of time. So going up to that 216, it was about 800% gain. I'm happy, I'm patient to buy the buy the major dips looking at my price points and then going with the market and just see where it will take me into this next stage of the bull market. Sol BTC, similar sort of pattern. If we started to break down way too far beneath some of the support levels of you know, 0.0027 or even a little further into these old highs, I would start to get a little concerned and think maybe my money is better off in Bitcoin because I want to reduce my risk. But of course, we'll continue to follow that as well on the charts and on the channel. So if you want to know more about trading and investing, make sure you check out the link down below. The Patreon groups are down there, TIA Lite. Join, you got some early adopters here. Q&A is coming up this month. So if you want to ask some questions, jump over to that. Links are all down below. Now, last thing is our Swiftex portfolio. Currently at 18,200. I bring this up because Solana, ADA and FTT were our biggest holds in the portfolio. And of course, we've had a FUD attack on FTT. Solana has broken and they've reset it. And then ADA has peaked out and not much is happening at the moment. So, we're still sitting pretty comfortably, 18,200-ish. This is in USD, but if you guys are in Australia and you want a second exchange or you haven't signed up to an exchange yet, 
get yourself an account with SwiftX. Links are down below. Ten dollars free Bitcoin. Uh, you can use this only in Australia at this point and New Zealand. And you can set up your own demo portfolio in case you are not too confident with buying your own cryptos. I'll wrap that video up there today. Thanks, guys, for your time and attention. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, bell notification icon. Always remember, your funds are safe. I will catch you at the next video. See you on Instagram and on Twitter or on Patreon. Until then, have more fun to get more done.